Jen, are you videoing? Yeah. Hello. You enjoy your meal tonight, do you? Yes, it was delicious. I knew you liked it. <laughs> We're having lots of fun. Yeah, we are. At the time, I, uh, I had some symptoms that were quite severe. And, uh, and my family really were seeing me sort of slowly dying in front of them. I, I don't think people realise what, what uh, uh, a lifesaver it is to, 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 for someone to receive a donated organ. Uh, I, I uh, have a hereditary disease, kidney disease, it's polycystic kidney, kidney disease, they call it. Uh, it's, uh, your kidneys uh, gradually uh, cease to function. I found out I had it uh, about 30 years ago, uh, just after our two youngest sons were born. Uh, so I, I'd known for 30 years that I would end up on dialysis. That's what you do for your loved one. You, you, you are there to support them, um, give them the, the positive try and give them positive feedback, which Paul is very positive, but um, I've got to be positive as well for him, which sometimes doesn't come naturally. I can feel the toxins in my body build up. You actually just feel physically unwell. Uh, you're weighing yourself all the time to check your weight. The weight is, equals fluid, and the fluid is what we've got to take off as well as toxins out of your blood. Because we were restricted to how much fluid intake we could have, the official uh, instruction was half a litre a day of fluid. That's everything. Tea, coffee, custard, yoghurt. Our life was completely, has completely changed. I found out when I was uh, 28 years of age, I was diagnosed with a condition um, called uh, an autoimmune disease called PSC. But I was told that it is a disease that you can live with, but it will slowly deteriorate your li liver over a period of time. I lost a lot of weight, I lost 25 kilos of weight and uh, I had ascites which is uh, retention of, of fluid really badly and had a condition called encephalopathy, which is um, a condition where the toxins uh, go to your brain because your liver's not detoxifying your body. I couldn't eat, couldn't walk, couldn't read, I couldn't sleep so I was in a really bad way and deteriorated very very quickly as, as a result. I think I've realised more now since it's happened how hard it was at the time. It just, I just did what I had to do. But looking back now, I wonder how I did it. So on the Saturday morning, I got up at uh, 5.30, uh, but the, uh, my mobile phone rang. I didn't recognise the number. And I just, my wife was, woke up too, and I just joked, oh, look, it, it, it's a kidney, it could be a kidney, you know, we, we always joked could be a kidney and, and answered the phone and sure enough it was the doctors saying you know come on into the hospital we have a kidney for you. Someone had lost a loved one. I still think about that quite often um, and I, s I still think about how lucky Paul is to have a kidney donated to him. It was a, a normal Monday morning. We believe that she said she had a, a little bit of a headache, dropped Zoe off at school and then went to work. Oh, Carol was sort of the hub of the family. She uh, had so much energy, I don't know where she got it all from. Me and my mum were very close. Um, she was like my best friend. She was very caring. Sorry. <laughs> um. She was scheduled for a meeting and um, she didn't turn up. And Carol was very prompt and they found her slumped um, and then they realised that she uh, wasn't responding to verbal communication and ambulance needed to be called. I was at school and then the assistant principal came into the class and normally when he comes in he pulls someone out that's in trouble and it's normally never me so when he called my name I sort of thought, oh, what have I done? Um, and then he said, your uncle's here and I thought, oh, that's strange. And then. Um, he said, oh, um, your mum's in hospital and nothing like that had ever happened before. So I was really worried. But yeah, that was a long car ride. She had a cerebral hemorrhage in the brain, yes. We got ushered into a, a room where the family members can meet. Of course, we got told that it wasn't looking too good at the time. 
We are so, so grateful for what you do and what you've done. Your, your loved ones are hero in my eyes. Sorry, <laughs> they are. They really are their heroes. And without a hero, she would be dead. It's not a, he might be dead, he would be dead. So I'm just so grateful. It's incredible. Wonderful gift. I just thought it was a no-brainer. Like, why wouldn't you help save other people's lives? I think the more we talk about this subject, the far better society will be around organ donation and, and how wonderful and how positive uh, the whole process is. To be able to save lives and save up to uh, 10 lives uh, is the possibility just from from one person passing away is just such a wonderful gift. If, if people realised uh, what, a, what a, a turnaround it is for a, a recipient, uh, I think they'd be you know, made more aware of, of what, a, what a great gift it is to, to donate an organ. But out of Carol's death, six people got to change their life. Like something so bad happened, but out of that, like she was able to save other people. And I know if like she got to choose, she would definitely say yes, because that's all she wants to do is help people. And even after she's gone, she was still able to help people.